Hello and welcome to the program today. Great to have you along. I hope you'll stay around for the next few minutes. My name is Charles Vance. Uh, welcome to Empowered today. I believe we've got a word from you that's going to help you, train you how to walk in power, faith, and victory. My daughter, Cindy Stowers, just a few weeks ago here at Empowered Church did a message entitled, Building a Legacy. I know you're going to be blessed. Some people build good ones. Some people build bad ones. This, was talk this is talking about building a legacy of righteousness. Stay around. It's going to change your life. I was talking about something with Renee, and it's been probably about a month ago. She said, you need to teach on that. So a couple weeks ago, I thought maybe when Dad and Kelly were in Florida that maybe I would touch on that. And then they asked me to speak today, and I think it's appropriate because it really ties into um, legacy. So, and if you've been around me enough, you know that I love to talk about that. Um, let me give you a little background. I'm fourth generation Pentecostal preacher. My children will be the fifth generation. And I am so pleased. And what's neat is you only know back four generations, but you know there was influence before that. And so I count that quite an honor to be part of a legacy that we have and that God is placed on our family. I take that very seriously and that I want my children to follow that. And so I train them on purpose so that they will know this is something that's been said on our family. You're going to continue that. Like I have no, no shame in saying that. However you continue that, that's up to you and the Lord. But you will continue this <laughs> legacy in Jesus' name. So back in January, the Holy Spirit spoke a word to me that was just so precious to me, and I want to share it with you because I think it's not just for me, it's for you too. So I want you to listen to this. He said, I have laid my hand on you, and it will never be removed. I will speak to you, and you will prophesy. Your words will be my words. Your heart, my heart. Your faithful ways will be my faithful ways. I love how he speaks of intimacy like that. He said, your life will be that which many generations can build upon. Because that's what righteous people do. They build a legacy of righteousness from which the fruit of the Lord hangs. Cindy, how do you know you're hearing from God? Because I don't talk like that. That's, that's one way, okay? I am, I am uh, prophetic, but I am not poetic. But that was amazing. And I'm going to go back and touch on that again. But he said, my life is your life. My hands are your hands. He's given everything to you. He's not holding anything of himself back. But he said, what I want is your whole life and your mind, your body, and your spirit. And he said, it's a peaceful surrender to me and my plans. And some of you came here this morning just to hear this. You are not just satisfactory to me. You are well-pleasing to me. Your faith fills my heart with joy. I enjoy being with you. And I fiercely guard your life. You need to know that. Unless you willfully and purposefully rebel against my plans for you, you will never be without protection. Be brave, be courageous, for you are covered. I will never fail to protect you and yours. And then he tagged it with this, be love to people. They'll never forget it. Isn't that good? Yeah. Something that I... I'm small, except that I'm chubby, and I'm pregnant, so now I've got an excuse. So um, anyways, but I have always had a consciousness of his protection of me, and I think it's because I have shoved my face so far into the Word that I could. I mean, I would fall asleep when I was a teenager with the Bible on my chest and just ask him, be real to me. Be reality to me. And you know what? He is. And you see a lot of Christians that walk around and they, they know the word and they hear it, but it's not real to them because it's more religion instead of the person of Jesus. But if you ask Jesus to be real to you, he will make himself known to you. And when you get into that place, it's precious. It's absolutely precious. And this is what he's talking about. All of this word was just relationship, relationship, relationship. I want you to know me fully. And I want you to give yourself to me fully. And when you walk in that way, you're going to create a legacy. 
and it's a powerful legacy that your family can follow. I'm going to reread this paragraph that just blew my mind. Your life will be that which many generations can build upon because that's what righteous people do. They build a legacy of righteousness from which the fruit of the Lord hangs. Isn't that good? This is what the Bible is. It's testimonies, testimonies of these legacies. Abraham, Peter, John, James, the disciples, Adam and Eve. What kind of legacy did they leave? Not the best, but listen, they, they walked with God. Well, how do we get there? Let's open our Bibles to Psalm 112. And I alluded to this a couple weeks ago when I received the offering. But we're going to break this down just a little bit more. I'm reading from the NIV, so if you have an app, you can open up to the NIV. It might be a little bit easier for you to follow along. And I love this psalm because it describes what belongs in the house of righteous people. And so you can, as Christian parents, as grandparents, aunts, uncles, just as Christians, you can decide what belongs in your house and what does not. This is a great guideline. Amen? And let me tell you this, nobody's going to decide that for you but you. You can pray that stuff falls on you and the blessing comes on you, but if you don't fiercely guard the word of the Lord in your home and his standards, it's not going to be there. So he says, praise the Lord. Blessed are those who fear the Lord, who find great delight in his commands. Their children will be mighty in the land. The generation of the upright will be blessed. Wealth and riches are in their houses, and their righteousness endures forever. Even in darkness, light dawns for the upright, for those who are gracious and compassionate and righteous. Good will come to those who are generous and lend freely, who conduct their affairs with justice. Surely the righteous will never be shaken. They will be remembered forever. They will have no fear of bad news. I love that verse. Their hearts are steadfast, trusting in the Lord. Their hearts are secure. They will have no fear. In the end, they will look in triumph on their foes. I like that because we go through stuff, right? But in the end, we will look in triumph on our foes. Amen? They have freely scattered their gifts to the poor. Their righteousness endures forever. Their horn will be lifted high in honor. The wicked will see and be vexed. They will gnash their teeth and waste away. The longings of the wicked will come to nothing. I want to go back and I just want to highlight those special words because I highlighted them on my paper. So I'm going to do that for you. What belongs in my house? He starts out the word blessed, right? Blessing belongs in your house. Verse 2 says your children are going to be mighty. So mightiness, weakness doesn't belong in your house, right? There's strength for the righteous, amen? And again it says that generation will be blessed. Wealth and riches belong in my house because I'm walking in covenant with the Lord. Things should be good in my house. I shouldn't be constantly having a struggle. And when I'm, when I'm hooked into the vine and I'm hearing his voice and he's speaking to me and I'm speaking that out and I'm living it, I'm because, listen, the whole essence of John 15 isn't just that you're saying it, it's that you're being it. It gets so much inside of you that you become the word, that you are a living, breathing testament of Jesus. When people see you, they're seeing the Bible being played out right in front of their eyes. That's powerful, isn't it? All right, righteousness, their righteousness endures forever. Righteousness belongs in your house. And let me just say this from a parent's perspective. You draw the line on what comes into your home. If it's not right, kick it out. Yeah. You, ha you don't need to allow your children's minds and their hearts to be polluted by the garbage that's on YouTube. Listen, we watch it like a hawk because our kids love watching them video game bloggers and all this kind of stuff. But if they ever get off... Of, of righteousness or anything that's off color, it's off. And my son knows that. He knows. He'll turn it off because there's righteousness. We have a standard for what we expect in our home. And it's not just being religious. It's just being in favor with our father. I mean, I feel his heart and he lets us know. We've always prayed this over Asher that we wouldn't have to tell him right from wrong. The Holy Spirit would do that. And he does. He's got a very tender conscience. And we're working on that with Liam. So 
<laughs> Even <laughs> He's a firm-minded boy. Um, all right, verse 4 says light. Light dawns for the... Even in darkness, there's light for us. You know why? Because we're staying in the light and we're fellowshipping with Him. And so there could be darkness all around. There could be coronavirus. There could be all kinds of weird stuff going around you. And then people wonder why you're just not upset. Because I live in the light. It's good over at my place. It's good where I live. Some people say I li- maybe I live in a bubble. I like my bubble. I'm not coming out just to, my, just to be like you. I, I like being happy. Okay, it's a good place to be. And if you'll keep the unrighteousness out, you will stay in light. Because have you ever noticed darkness and depression comes in when you let a bunch of junk in that you really shouldn't have? Confusion comes, I heard Keith Moore say this, confusion comes when you start considering things that you should never have considered. (laughs) So turn off the news and turn on the word. Let's listen to that. So verse 4 says those people are gracious. They are compassionate. They are righteous. Am I gracious? As a mother, do my kids see that? Do they see that standard in my house? Do I give grace to people? Am I compassionate? Am I being a good example of righteousness? Uh, Verse 5 says, they're generous and lend freely. Listen, this ought to be you. If it hasn't been yet, and that doesn't mean the Bible's, what's it say? Don't don't go shout it out on the streets that you're being generous to people, but be generous to people. Be generous to your neighbors. That that makes a great community. Amen? All right, people who conduct their affairs with justice. Just conduct. They do the right thing. Um, verse 6 says they'll never be shaken. I like being unshakable. I don't know about you. Remembered forever. Lasting reputation. This, this struck me this morning. You know, we have such a fame-hungry society right now. Like everybody wants to be on Instagram and have their... I, I love um, seeing these kids like on... We like watching the talent shows, but when they put as their profession that they are a, an influencer, a social media influencer, that really tickles me because that's, that's not a real job. Obviously, Every, everybody is a social media influencer. In some, you are influencing people. But don't mistake influence for fame. Because a lot of people just want their face and their name out there. But the Bible says that we will be remembered forever. We're going to have a lasting reputation. And it's not us. It's the fruit of the Lord hanging from our lives. Amen? No fear of bad news. I love that. Don't you love knowing that there's security in the Lord and that... How many, as moms, come on guys, when Asher was a newborn, we got word that a child I had babysat, he had a little boy, and when his little boy was a year and a half old, they woke up and found him dead. Now, I've got a newborn here in this news, and don't you think Satan tried to torment me with that or make me afraid? But the Bible says I will have no fear of bad news. My heart is fixed, trusting in the Lord. So I'm steadfast, trusting in Him. My heart is secure and no fear. I've said for years, and when we finally build a house, I'm just going to do it. No fear allowed. There is a fear is not welcome here. That's what I said. Fear is not welcome here. You can make a lot of bad stuff welcome in your house. You know that? By the way that you live your life, you can invite it. But... I want to put that someplace at some point. My fear is not welcome here. No fear. Verse 8 says, they will look in triumph. There's something about living a victorious life. When you live like everybody else, there's no difference, right? But when you live victorious and your friends and your neighbors constantly see you rise above. See, last year was a hard year for a lot of people. But you know what? Joe and I agreed from the beginning of this whole ep- pandemic, whatever, We will never go under. We will always go over. You know why? Because we're tithers. We live in covenant with God. Uh, We had a freak accident back in the spring last year. Some of you don't even know. Uh, I was parked at Joe's office and a low boy, which I guess the big, the men know what that is, big uh, trailer on the back of somebody's truck broke off and flew through the Tudor's parking lot and hit Joe and knocked him down on the ground. And I'm watching this from his office window. He's a big, he's a big boy. He was standing out at my car talking to Asher. It knocked my car door like that and then hit Asher in the face and slammed shut. And then I'm watching that. It shoved my car into his truck and it just 
totaled my car because there was nothing they could do for the back end of my car. Well, he got injured, but the Lord healed him. Asher got a pump knot on his face. He got healed. But one thing that we said the whole time with the whole insurance, because you know insurance can give you the runaround, we will never go under. We will always go over. This is going to benefit us. Satan cannot take something that's it's not going to be a benefit to us. God's going to turn it around. Amen. And you know what? He did. And in the end, we looked in triumph on our foes. Asher and I sowed a seed to believe God uh, for a certain amount of money that we were believing for this settlement, and the Lord just overdid it. He overdid it. Isn't that good? Triumph is what verse 8 says. That belongs in my house. And it says they freely scattered their gifts to the poor. In other words, they're generous. And their righteousness, again, endures forever. Righteousness is a lot in this, isn't it? And it says honor. Honor. Not shame. And some of you need to hear that because you've carried shame in your homes and in your hearts for a long time. And that's just become part of who you are and how you express and how you emote. You've been ashamed. And that needs to stop because if you live in the word no shame should be long there amen god lifts you high in honor and i just speak that over you today in jesus name amen. all right in 2016 the lord told me this he said i'm growing you into a tree of righteousness and he said can't you see because the lord shows me a lot in visions and i'm just unapologetic that's just how he does it he always has and if it's a blessing to you than good, but it's always a blessing to me. But he said, can't you see the shoots and branches, lush leaves, the height and the shade? He said, smell the earth. It's precious. And he said this, my mind is on you always. I saw, a vis I had a vision within the last couple of years, and I think I was sitting in our old campus, and I saw this huge, beautiful oak. Now, I love oak trees because they're just, I mean, they were huge, Right. I mean, you look at that and you're like, that thing's been there for like 200 years or something. And it's amazing looking. And as I was thinking about that tree, it dawned on me, I am that tree. Yeah. And people will rest under the shade of my revelation. You look at people like Brother Hagen, Oral Roberts, John G. Lake, Peter, Paul, they got the revelation and we enjoy the fruit of it, don't we? They did something prior to our even being on this planet where they got alone with God and they got a revelation and they got something. They received something from Jesus. They conceived something. They gave birth to it. And now we enjoy it. Yeah. We enjoy it. You do the same thing. Amen? Amen? You get in the presence of God and you stay with Him and you get pregnant with something from the Lord. People are going to sit under the shade of your covenant with God. Isaiah 61, 3, the second half said, They will be called oaks of righteousness. That's us. A planting of the Lord for the display of His splendor. Now, I've been alluding to this word a little bit, but I want to just define it for you. The word legacy from the Merriam-Webster Dictionary says, It's a gift by will, especially of money or other personal property, um, so, in other words, your last will and testament, what you get, that's your legacy that you're passing on. And they had another definition, which I loved. Something transmitted by or received from an ancestor or predecessor or from the past. Now, we all, whether you realize it or not, your life is the sum total of legacy on a spiritual sense, on a spiritual plane. I asked this question a few years ago in a message, and I'm going to ask it today. You know, this current earth that we live on will be here for at least another 1,007 years. Okay, let me tell you how I get to this. Because we believe there's going to be a 1,000 years reign of Christ, right? Be at least probably a seven-year tribulation. Maybe three and a half. We might, we might be here for three and a half, right? There's all kinds of theology about this. But regardless, we're going to be here on this earth for another 1,000 years. What will your legacy speak of you in 1,000 years? Because what you do now gets into your family line. And it gets into people. How do you think Abraham thought? Think about this. A man that was childless, how do you see your future in a thousand years? I mean, you're going to be dead and gone. You were rich. Everything's dispersed. But now he's got a kid. If he looked a thousand years in the future and saw David and the kingdom and how they had conquered and possessed 
all of the promised land, it probably would have blown his mind. You know what? He sowed something. I'm going to get to that in just a second. I watch this show called, every now and then, called Finding Your Roots. Have you ever seen that on PBS? Um, it's, it's really cool, isn't it? There's this guy who's a West Virginian, and um, he's like a historian, and I don't know, he's a doctor or something. But anyway, he brings in famous people, and he finds their family history. So it's super cool. But one time I was watching Ted Danson. You know, wasn't he on Cheers? Cheers? Yeah. Okay, so <laughs> not my show, you know. But anyhow, Ted Danson was on there, and they found out that he had roots in the Puritans. And so actually he had roots in one of the most famous women in the Puritan church. And the reason she was famous was because she would take the lessons from her pastor and then she would go and teach them and break down the messages so that the women in their community can understand. She started holding weekly Bible studies and the men started wanting to come. It was okay when the women wanted to come, but when the men started wanting to come, the Puritan church had a real hard time with that. And she was prophetic. She believed in the Lord. She really did not like the uh, works gospel she wanted the gospel of grace and so maybe she had some stuff wrong but you know what she stood up and they actually put her on trial and she was kicked out of Massachusetts Bay Colony because of her strong stand and you know what he said when he heard that about his 10th great-grandmother he said you know I've always been attracted to strong women he said my mother is a strong woman my sister my wife is a strong woman. He's married to an actress, and even if I said her name, you wouldn't know who she was. But um, anyways, I think this is neat because it somehow got into his DNA. And I want you to think about that. He never knew her name, didn't know who she was, but she was influencing his decisions, his likes, and his dislikes. You know what? My great-grandmother, my, my papa remembers hearing his mom pray for all her sons to be saved. And they weren't until they were some of them older. But you know what? We're not the only ministry family. I forget about this. We're not the only ministry family in the Vances. My dad has a first cousin in Connecticut of all places. Now listen, these people are full gospel. I didn't know full gospel people lived in Connecticut, did you? <laughs> we thought they were all Catholic or, or Lutheran or something like that. But they have a full gospel church of over 2,000 in New Haven, Connecticut. We're not the only ones. Her prayers did something. It sowed something into our lives. She sowed something that we're reaping. Abraham sowed something his descendants got to reap. And the only place, you know, that he owned in that promised land, you know the only place he owned? A tomb. He got to bury Sarah. He got buried there. That's the only place he owed, owned in that place. But that tomb became the seed to own the whole place. Trees, and I alluded to the trees, but trees are rarely enjoyed at their maximum potential by those who plant them. Do you know who enjoy them? The future generations. Yeah. And what I do now, I can consciously do with a legacy in mind. I tithe for my kids. I give to the poor so they will never be without. I'm establishing habits, character, developing a lifestyle with the future in mind. The Holy Spirit just really kind of gave me a little a wake up. My kids, when do they ever sit? And I'm busy, you know, as moms. Our prayer life changes when we had those children because we are never without them, not even in the bathroom, okay? <laughs> right? Right? But I was thinking, when do my kids actually ever see me turn on worship music and just pray in my room? Because I used to do that like all, we did that like every day, just go up to our third floor room when, when we lived where we lived. And, and so I was like, you know what? This needs to come back. This needs to come back. My kids need to see what it looks like to worship in my home, not just at church. And here I am in the floor. I'm just listening, and Liam's like, what are you doing, Mommy? <laughs> I was like, I'm, I'm praying and worshiping. Can I do it too? <laughs> yes, you can. They learn it from you, right? So this makes everyday decisions like, Okay, I'm going to throw this out there. I don't know if I really am committing to this in my heart, but this makes everyday decisions like exercising and eating healthy easier because, listen, I realize I'm establishing a pattern, not just for me, not just for my kids, but for future generations. How many people have, and Joe talked about this guy that, you know, he got diabetes 
And he, he said, we're just going to pray that you don't get it. He said, but if I've got it, they've got to find it. I mean, like he was, he said, my, my, my mom had diabetes. My grandma had diabetes. Like it was a family heirloom or so, you know, I mean, he just really was going to keep the diabetes, went to the doctor. He said, I got diabetes. I mean, bless the devil. You got exactly what you, <laughs> what you believed for, right? These things go from generation to generation and you can be the one to stop it. Thank you for joining me on the program today. Always great to have you along. I trust this message has been a blessing to you. We're going to continue on tomorrow's broadcast. If you haven't ordered this already, do it right now. You can order on audio CD. You can order one of three ways. You can go to our website. You can call that number that you see on the screen, or you can just write. We appreciate you ordering these products. The money goes back into ministry. You are helping us take this good news around the world. If you're being blessed by the ministry here at Empowered, let me encourage you to be a blessing to others by sowing a seed this month. Here's how you partner with us. Empowered Ministries is dedicated to reaching our world with the love of Jesus Christ. Your financial support is helping us extend God's grace to the multitudes and empowering us to reach the lost, heal the sick, feed the hungry, and to bring hope to the hopeless. Through Empowered Television, we're impacting nations by teaching believers to thrive in their calling and to live successful, powerful, and productive lives. If you're being blessed by the ministry here at Empowered, you can help us continue to do the works of Jesus by sowing a seed this month. With your gift of any size, you'll receive our monthly partner letter. And with your gift of $41 or more, we will also include a special teaching by Pastor Charles Vance that will take your faith to another level. When you become an EMT partner, you are helping us transform lives around the world. And we believe what you make happen for others, God will make happen for you. Thank you so much for your gifts of support. We appreciate you more than words can tell. We're praying for you every day. I want to pray with those of you who are not born again or you're not sure about your relationship with God. I want you to know Jesus loves you. He's already paid for your sins once, the Bible said, and for all. Now it's up to you to accept the sacrifice that he's made. Will you pray with me today? Make this confession of faith. Invite him into your life. Say this out loud. Heavenly Father, I invite Jesus into my life. I confess him as my Lord, my master. I believe he died for my sins, and Father, you raised him from the dead. Thank you for saving me. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer and meant it from your heart, welcome to the family of God. We've put together a Get Started Packet for new Christians. It's our gift to everyone that's prayed with us today. You can get yours free and postpaid by going to our website, charlesvance.org. Press the New Believers tab, fill out the information. We will get that packet right back out in the mail to you. And then get in a faith-based church somewhere and always remember, stay in the Word. You will stay empowered.